Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to this episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere a new movie or TV series that is debuting in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland. And up for discussion this week is a romantic movie. Uh, it's basically about two college uh, teenagers uh, starting out the, their lives past uh, it, it's called Beautiful Disaster, but there's this hidden concept in, t- in terms of their relationship is that they both come from troubled backgrounds and they're trying to put their troubles beside them and make them work in terms of a new chapter in their life. It stars Virginia uh, Gardner, uh, Dylan Sprouse, uh, Autumn Reze, uh, Michael Kuditz. And our special guest this evening, the one and only Brian Austin Green. And uh, Brian, <laughs> uh, great to have you yes, back sir. again. Uh, we Thank had you. you Thank you for having me back. We had you there in 2018. I was doing my research for this movie and I saw the cast of actors and I saw, I yeah. saw all American sort of actors. And I said, fairly OK. But then I, then I did a bit more digging and I found out it was filmed in Bulgaria. It was, yeah. We did film in, in Bulgaria, which is odd because uh, about, I, I, I don't know, um, more than a quarter, probably a third of the film um, takes place in Las Vegas. Okay. So, uh, so we shot um, Bulgaria for Las Vegas and it worked. <laughs> Surprisingly, you'd watch it and you'd go, I, have no, I, I had no idea. And how did opportunity come about, uh, Brian, to get involved in this uh, project? And were, were you open to the, the idea of traveling abroad? Was there something about the script that made you say, yeah, that's, a, that's appealing uh, in terms of that sort of project? Because I imagine an awful lot of scripts come your way uh, throughout the years. And some of you might say, nah, not for me. And others you might say, yeah, that's I want to learn more. What did make what made this stand out for you to say that, yeah, this is something that I'd be interested in? So... So this film, this project kind of came out of nowhere. It wasn't something that was on um, anybody's radar. And I guess they had they had another actor in mind to play uh, Mick, the character that I play. Um, and that that ended up falling apart for for one reason or another. And, and so they they sent it to me. Um, and it was one of those situations where it was like, we need to know within like four days if it's something that you want to do or not, because this uh, shooting comes up soon for this character. So um, so they sent me the script. I I really liked the character because the, uh, the character just has a lot of layers. Uh, there's, I, I sort of throughout my career have really found myself drawn to characters that have a bunch going on that aren't that aren't sort of shallow. What you see on the surface is what you get. Um, they take a little time to sort of unfold, and and uh, and you get you 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 get a much better sense of who they are just over time. Um, and this guy is that way. I, I thought uh, I thought the script was really fun and and interesting. And I've I've never done sort of the romantic comedy. This is this is the play on the romantic comedy because it's not. Um, it's not nearly as much of a romantic comedy as we're used to. It's not just sort of a happy-go-lucky fun about love film. There, there is a lot of, because both of the lead characters come from, um, troubled pasts and, and backgrounds and have, have a lot of baggage themselves. Uh, it makes it a little more, a little more, uh, complex. So um, I was saying, I was saying that the characters, uh, the characters, unlike what I've experienced in normal romantic comedies, they're, they have these really dark, heavy backgrounds um, and a lot going on. So I, I really enjoyed reading it just for that reason. Um, the Roger, the director, I, I've known for a while, I knew of. Um, and, you know, still coming out of COVID, there's, there's not, it's, jobs are um, few and far between. There's just, there's, there, there are a lot of things going on um, as far as the industry right now. And a lot of change is happening. And 
possible strikes happening. And um, so this one it just sort of made sense. I was, I was at a point where uh, traveling to Bulgaria and doing that really seemed like it would, it would work. I had just come off of filming something else and uh, it just time-wise, it really, it really made sense. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Jenny's great. I didn't, uh, I didn't get a chance to work with Dylan too much. Um, I, I met him a few times, but uh, it was fun. It was a really good time. And uh, Brian, in terms of a beautiful disaster about your character, Mick, I presume you play the father of uh, Virginia Gardner's uh, yeah. character. And uh, there's another yeah. sort of father there of um, Dylan's character as well. Is there the, the family background, dare I say, is it a bit of a Romeo and Juliet in terms of love the are the two families? Do they like each other? Do, uh, do you yeah. like um, Dylan's family? or? So it's not, they're... they're... There is no connection from family to family. Uh, it's not so much Romeo and Juliet that way, as much as um, there is there is a love hate relationship between the two lead characters, between uh, Virginia and and Dylan. Um, very different people. Um, they're sort of in this place in their lives, especially uh, Virginia's character. She is um, really trying to stand on her own two feet and do uh, do her own thing. So Dylan kind of catches her off guard. Um, she he, He's not what she was expecting. He's not what she was ever thought she would be looking for. So it ends up being a relationship that um, she didn't see coming at all, but, but ends up meaning a lot to her. Her relationship with her father is, um, is a rocky one. They've had definite ups and downs. He uh, he is a gambler. He's been a gambler her whole life. Um, she's gotten really good at it uh, because of him. But then at the same time, it's it's just sort of a world that she really wants nothing to do with. She's she's moved on from. So um, in this film, there there is a bit of him. Uh, leaning on her and, and, and wanting her help and um, having to use her skill set that, uh, that she gained throughout her life to pull him out of a situation that, uh, that, that's a bit sticky for him. Is he a bit of a deadbeat dad, dare I say, Brian, in terms of... No, no, he, lo he absolutely loved his daughter, but he is... He's a very narcissistic person. At the end of the day, he matters more than anybody else in his life. So, um, and, and he proves that over and over again. And every time she feels like, oh, maybe he's different and he's reaching out because he wants more than just my help. He wants a relationship with me. Um, he lets her down. So... And and that is that is one of the things that happens within um, within this film. Um, but it's you know a lot of people have those relationships with uh, family members and and their parents, and um, it's a very real situation, unfortunately. Um, but it's at least. Hopefully, people get to watch watch it within this uh, the context of this film and learn a little bit from it, and then have a good time at the same time watching uh, watching the relationship between Virginia and Dylan because it's a good one. And were you able to obviously your family man now and you're uh, at a different yeah. sort of stage of your life now? Were you able yeah. to maybe transcend some of your own life experiences into this sort of Mick character and the way you wanted to portray him on sort of screen uh, in terms of that sort of dare I say mid fifties sixties man? Um, no, not really. I, I mean, I. I hope I'm not the kind of man that, that Mick is. Um, I hope I'm not the kind of father that he is. I, the, I mean, I think the only thing that crossed over from my own life was um, just the similarity of playing a character with a, with a child compared to having kids myself. 
but there wasn't much outside of that that really uh, that that was really similar between the two. But I think that's what made it fun. Uh, you know, I I love my kids, and they mean the absolute world to me, and I would do absolutely anything for them. So to play a character that wasn't that way is um, it was interesting. That's that's always interesting for me. That's that that's uh, that's a very interesting world to play in because it's so far from the world that I live in. So that's that's the fun for me. Yeah, you know, being being able to play somebody that is so far from uh, myself is is fun. It's fun for me. And I, before we came on air, Brian, you spoke about uh, being actively uh, busy and uh, in terms of looking for projects that come your way uh, in terms of the future that might start yeah. to appeal to you. Uh, are you. Have you still got the love, the grow for the industry? Is it still there after all these decades being involved with it? Do you still feel that you have a lot more to give? Absolutely, I do. I mean, this is, um, I've been, I've been acting for a majority of my life now and I plan to act and do what I do for the second half of my life, um, which I kind of feel like starts this year. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting into much more um, producing and, and, and stuff behind the camera as well, just to have a little more control over what it is that I'm doing. And I have a bunch of really, uh, I think, good ideas. So I'm trying those out, um, working with some great people, um, really trying to kind of take control of my, my career a bit now. Cause it's not, you know, at the entertainment industry, uh, being an actor is, it's hard to make a lifelong career out of, I, I think, unless you're in like the top 1% because it's, you're either working or you're out of work. It's not like somebody that has a nine to five that gets a job and then they've got job security for the next 10 years of their lives, 15 years of their lives, five years of their lives. You know, they know every month I'm making this much money. Um, as an actor, you don't necessarily have that. So you work, you make good money, and then you're out of work until you're working again. So it's like you're, everything is constantly in flux. It feels uh, much more like, um, like the tide in the ocean. Um, so I'm trying to make just as much stability in it as possible. Um, just with my family. I mean, I have five kids now, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, really find that continue to be creative and, and continue to do it because I love it, but then also find these sort of nine to five stability within it. Um, and I will. And Brian, do all genres appeal to you? I know you've been mostly the comedy sorts of genre, but take, for example, do sci-fi, do horror, do those type of genres, do, do they appeal I to love, you as well? I love all genres. I've done, uh, I did um, a sci-fi series, uh, Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. We did two seasons of that. Um, I love, I love drama. I love horror. Um, I, at the end of the day, it's all about the characters and if they're fun to play or not. Comedy is great because because um, it's just so much damn fun on set. I mean, it's yeah. we're just constantly trying to make each other laugh. And that's always a great feeling when you go to work uh, with the intent of being as funny uh, as you possibly can and, um, and helping um, sustain uh, as much funny around you as possible and help, help people grow and be funny as well. But it's, it's really fun also going on set to do sci-fi is fun because, uh, you, half of it, you don't know what it is you're shooting until you see it w when it's all done. Uh, when I was doing Terminator, um, it was a lot of that. I'm not, I've never been one to really watch what it is I do because I'm, just super critical, but I ended up watching that show a lot because I was curious to see how the finished things looked compared to when we were there shooting them. Um, so that's a lot of fun for me. Uh, horror is just fun to see how the audience reacts in things. Um, genres are fun though. I mean, I like, I like jumping around and doing all of them as much as I can. And, and so I'd love to continue 
doing that as much as I can. Um, cause I enjoy it all. I haven't, I haven't found a genre that I don't like. It's okay. Uh, Brian, before we start to wrap up, I know you're, uh, we spoke on air, you'll have to come to Ireland in the near future and taste the Guinness. Yeah. And, uh, it must be, uh, <laughs> yeah. if, you don't, if you don't get here in 2023, you have to make it a pit stop in uh, 2024. I think, and, uh, I, do, think we, do a I think we talked about, I think we talked about Guinness the last time we, we, yeah. we spoke because I'm actually a, quiz. a huge fan of It was a quiz, it was a quiz, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Your knowledge yeah. of Ireland, yeah, you did quite, you did quite okay, actually, I have to say, I, in fairness shockingly because i wasn't expecting <laughs> to do well at all <laughs> and uh, we we made the qu questions fairly simple that, uh, that that's that's for sure uh brian austin green <laughs> before we start to uh finish up for the final 30 seconds you might get back to beautiful disaster you might enlighten all the all our audience all our listeners out this evening here nationwide in cinemas throughout ireland why should they go to the cinema and their planes trains automobiles more motorbikes, uh, tractors, whatever mode of transport, get in, sit under a cinema seat, put up the recliner, have their popcorn, their Pepsi, their Maltesers, put their arms behind the head, sit down, wait for a beautiful disaster to come on, and what's in store for them, Brian Austin Green? You, yeah, you just sold it beautifully. That's the fact that uh, the fact that we, after COVID and that whole disaster, um, we have the chance to do something like this again and live this life and have fun and and share these moments with people um movies are a huge part of that they're fun they're an event you know go with people uh you do the popcorn and the candy and the soft drinks and the stuff and uh and you enjoy it and and beautiful disaster is a is a fun one for sure on that note, uh, Brian Austin Green for me, Jim Conlon, a pleasure mate talking to you on the airwaves again this evening. All the best with beautiful uh, disaster. We know 2023 is going to be a productive one for you uh, in the near Thank future. And hopefully we're going to see an awful lot of more projects coming our way here in Ireland in the near future. But for the moment, Brian Austin Green, stay safe, take care and God bless. Same to you. Thank you.